everyone, it's Nisa, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to get the Hive Mind Mount, a secret map that has recently been discovered by the Secret Finder community. Let's get straight into it. There are two parts to getting this mount. There are four different colored monocles that you can obtain, and you will first need to obtain one of them, then you'll need to find a group with the other three. One lucky person per group doesn't need to get any of them. Now we'll be covering all of the monocles in this guide, and you will find the timestamps in the description below. I will start by suggesting to turn off war mode. Even if you love PvP, just do it and you'll thank me later. Also, you need to have Court of Stars unlocked, so if you did not play during Legion, you might have some Nightborn rep to farm. The beginning of this puzzle for everyone starts in Shatra, at this vendor called Grifta, where you will need to buy a talisman of true treasure tracking and equip it to be able to interact with pretty much everything in this mount hunt. Once equipped, Four items on the table behind Grifta will start glowing with the colors of each monocle. For the red monocle, you will need 2,380 gold. And if you're not a druid, make sure to have the Vashir seahorse or at least some sort of water mount and the underwater breeding you obtain after the starting quest of Vashir. And you guessed it, for this one, you need to head to Vashir. The red monocle is sold by a vendor in the Shimmering Expense. Sir Finley Mergleton will require 5 scintillating murloc skin lotions, 5 potent gastropod gloops, and 5 captured caviation bubbles. In order to obtain these, you're gonna have to go back and forth between different vendors in all 3 zones of Vashir. You need to be quick because the currencies have a timer on them, so make sure to have about 1 hour available before you start. White currencies have a 5 minute timer, green currencies a 30 minute timer, and blue currencies a one hour timer. Obtaining them comes into four parts. Start off here at Sir Finley Merkleton and buy 500 seashells. Then head off to these vendors in the specific order. Each vendor will have one item you can trade off at that moment and buy as many as you can of that specific item before moving on to the next NPC. We start at the Volatile Violet Scale, followed by the Manita Stargazer, Little Whaley, the Gloomy Bluefin, and finally, Old Fish Breath. You will have obtained 50 Glittergill Glitter. Go back to Mergleton and buy 80 seashells, then head to Deeds. Gloomy Bluefin, Little Carp, Volatile Violet Scale, Crimson Angerfish, then the Manta Stargazer. Congratulations, you have enough to buy the first item required for the monocle. Go back to the Murloc and get 5 Murloc Skin Lotions as well as 300 seashells for the next step. This time, you will visit and buy from Old Fish Breath, followed by the Blackfish, the Volatile Violet Scale, and the Little Carp. One last round of mobs, and we're done! This time, you need 1500 seashells. Start off with visiting Little Whaley, then head to Old Fish Breath, the Crimson Angerfish, and finally the Blackfish. That's it! You have all three items required, then you can go back to Sir Finley Mergleton to bind the monocle. Now this is probably the most intimidating part of the whole puzzle, and it starts in the Halls of Origination in Uldu. Head to the dungeon, clear the first boss, and head to the elevator. With the neck equipped, you will see an orb that you can interact with, which will activate the puzzle. Head to the first floor through the door north of the elevator to be able to access it. Now the goal here is to turn all of the constellations to the same color. To do that, you will need to interact with these refractors. There are three different types of them. The round ones affect the constellations in a square around them, while the cross ones affect the constellations in the direction the refractor is pointing. Note that you can click any of the refractors without being next to them, and that they don't really have a max read. They will change anything in their path until they find a wall or another refractor. The first thing to do is to figure out what color you are supposed to turn them into. Play around with some of the refractors to get a feel for it, and you should find some constellations that cannot be affected by any of them, meaning they will never change color. And for me, that color was blue. Once you have that figured out, I found the easiest way to solve this was to find constellations that are only affected by one refractor and putting that one into the right position. From there, you will most likely have constellations in that path that can only be affected by one more refractor, and you will know that that's the one you need to set to the right position. There is an add-on to help with the puzzle, but it wasn't working for me, so I didn't get a chance to try it. If you want to give it a go, I will link it in the description. 
Once you turn all of the constellations into one color, a chest will appear and you can loot your yellow monocle. This is probably the easiest one to get. Head to Skyreach in Spires of Arak. Clear up to the last boss and behind him you should be able to see a console. When you interact with it, a grid of different colored lights will appear in front of you with an eye at the center of it. You can direct that eye to go a certain direction by interacting with the orbs on the console. The pattern is right, up, down, up, right, right, up, left, down, up, left, and down. The chest should appear right there. This monocle has you chasing letters all over Azeroth, and it starts where we bought the talisman, in Shatra. Right on the table behind Grifta, we find the first letter glowing in blue. Make sure to interact with each letter before moving on to the next one. The second letter is in High Mountain. Fly to the prep foot flight point and go inside the second tent. It will be sitting on a crate. Go back to Dalaran, because your next stop is Old Karazhan. Now, if you're like me, you most likely got lost in there, and I'm sorry. The third letter will be on a chair in Medivh's chambers, which you can access after the chess event in the staircase leading to Prince Malkazar. The fourth letter has you going to the Razor Fen Downs in the Thousand Needles. Behind the second to last boss, at the end of the instance, you can find the letters sitting on a crate. The fifth letter is in Mount Hydral, Head to the Shrine of Aviana, and in the highest floor of her shrine, you will find a letter on a small table. The sixth letter is found in Ice Crown, at the Iron Wall Dam. It's a little bit harder to see, but you will find it balancing on a pointy end like this. The seventh and final letter is in the Nyatsao Temple in Town Long Steps. It will be sitting next to a shrine. All you have left to do is go get your reward, which will be in Cordana in the Borean Tundra. At the very top of the nexus, you will find a chest containing the blue monocle. Alright, now that everyone has a monocle, we can all head to Suramar. Whatever you decided, make sure at this point that everyone in your party either has war mode on or war mode off. Also, make sure that everyone has their followers disabled. In Suramar, you will find four withered with glowing eyes corresponding to the colors of each monocle. The first letter of their names also corresponds to the color. Now, while I was doing this, they were all bugged and looked like ribs, but it still worked. You will need one person at each location with the corresponding monocle, and the fifth player will be waiting at the beams right here. When you equip the corresponding monocle, the withered become hostile to you. To disable the beams, each withered will have to be casting a spell called Draw Energy. They will do so when they reach 1 HP, and you need them all to do it at the same time. When that happens, your fifth player can get inside. Once that player is in, he will be able to interact with the lost cat toy. That toy will deal damage to the player, and that number will be your code for the next step. That's when you're gonna need to head to Court of Stars. In the Midnight Court, in this little room, you will find Lady Chaton and all five of her kittens. Each cat will need to be petted a certain amount of times by a party member. The amount is what your code is for. If you obtain the four digit code, you can consider the first digit as a zero. The order of the cats is Mrs. Fluffy Muffins, Shadow, Mew, Ash, and Bella. So for example, if your code was 12345, you would pet Fluffy once, Shadow twice, Mew three times, Ash four times, and Bella five times. When you pet them, they get a stacking buff, and you need to synchronize so that all cats must have the right number of stacks at the same time to proceed to the next step. When you pet the cats correctly, they will start running towards a newly spawned Avoid Orb. Click on it, and you will get teleported to the next puzzle. The goal is to get all members across this gap. To do so, you need to jump onto floating platforms. Whenever someone jumps onto a platform, it will make new ones appear and some old ones disappear. And in order to do so properly, you need to follow a very specific pattern. Start by assigning a number to each one of your party members. We simply followed the rate frames order. 
then you simply have to follow the solution. For each round, one player will move, and it will move in a certain sequence before moving on to the next player. Now, this would be a little long to just name everything on video, so I will put a link to the pattern to follow in the description, and you can pause the video to see it otherwise. Note that everyone starts off going forward to the same platform, which is the one that was initially there. Once you're across, walk to the door and it should open. You're almost done. This is the final part. Now, the goal is once again to get everyone across. The thing is, you always need at least two people on the floating disc to be allowed passage. Now, only one player in the group will be able to cross with any duo. We'll call them player one. The first goal is to find that person, and the only way to do it is trial and error. Send duos of people across. When one group makes it, you know that player one is one of those two. Just test them with someone else to know which one it is. Now, player one will also be able to cross with a specific trio, so keep player one on the disc and have other duos jump on until you find who that trio is. The two players in the trio will be called players two and three, and the last two will be players four and five. Once you have that figured out, it's pretty easy. Send the trio, player one, two, and three, across, and have player two stay on the other side. On the way back, player three and five switch places. Once across, player two and four switch places. You now have player one and two on the platform, while player four is safely across. Get the trio across again and drop off player two. On the way back, player 3 and 5 switch places again, and when dropping off player 5, player 2 goes back on the platform and we can pick up player 3 as the final round and drop everybody off. Now, I know this is a lot of information, so I will also be putting it in image form in the description below. And that's it! Stand on each circle on the ground and interact with the hive mind. It will go directly into your box. Congratulations on the new mount! If you have any questions, don't hesitate to post them in the comments below and I'll answer as many as I can. A special thank you to the Secret Finders community and to Warcraft Secrets for doing amazing work and figuring all of this out. I will have a link to their Discord channel in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. There will be a lot more mount guides coming up in the next few weeks. So hope to see you soon. Bye bye!